Shano. Two Aprilias on the sprint podium yesterday. There has never been two Aprilias on a main Sunday Grand Prix podium in history. Could be a memorable day, a memorable weekend, couldn't it, for the Italian factory. It'll be a tailwind for these riders heading into turn one, so very easy to lose your braking marker into the first corner here at the end of that one kilometre. It's lights out and we are racing in Catalonia. It's another superb launch from number one Pekka Bagnaia. Likewise, Jorge Martin, who fires through from that second row of the grid. Are we going to get them all safely through this first corner? Contacting De Zarco, and then it's just Skittles. Down go Betsecki, down goes Alex Marquez and Fabio De Antonio. Further round, though, into that was so, so scary. Pekka Bagnaia, I, I think he had a, a, a leg run over. Yeah. Marco Betsecki as well was clearly had the wind knocked out of him as well. Yeah, these, Zarco's these riders, down. These riders are recognising, Matt, that they've got five minutes. I was going to get in the air. There he goes then. Out of control was now Bastian. He's going to get a penalty for that. Absolutely yeah. no question. More than a big slap on the wrist. There's the big, big high side then for Peko Bagnaia. As we mentioned, it's around and focus on the race again. When when someone gets hit upper body wise, it's really hard to, to get to focus again. And, uh, and we're expecting a depleted grid to head out for this restart, which, as Matt mentioned, will be over 23 laps. So the green light is at the end of pit lane, open for 60 seconds. There's pole position, sadly, with reigning world champion Pekka Bagnaia undergoing medical checks in the circuit medical centre after it hit. And the depleted field here in Barcelona gets underway for the warm-up lap. Of course, the initial race distance before the red flag was 24 laps. We will go over 23 laps. Lights out and we are racing. Jorge Martina again powers away on that Prima Prima Ducati and he eases on three Miguel Oliveira on this high speed run down to the first corner. Let's hope they all make it through safely this time around. They all look a little bit more than on the factory of Prulia. Polis Varga looks like he's in early retirement or he's encountering some early technical problems, not what he wanted in his home Grand Prix. So Maverick Vinales then leads at lap one. The top good all guns blazing on that first lap, starting from the head of the second row in fourth place. He got through quickly on early leader, Jorge Martin. There's Miller, Andalasia Spargo running a little bit hot into that. That bike was able to continue running. He'll be told to get off the racetrack. So he's out of this Grand Prix. So one KTM is out of play. Of course, two factory Ducatis not in this Grand Prix. Maverick Vinales then leading Jorge Martin. Alasia Spargo ahead of him. The rider immediately ahead of him is John. Joan Zarco. Zarco through that uh, second lap is already three quarters of a second adrift of the leading quartet. That was close. He's going to cut to the inside line coming through turn number 10. And he has got through. That was brilliantly done there by Alexis Vigro, setting about hunting down his teammate Vinales, who has opened up a lead of over half a. This is dreamland, dream territory, isn't it, for the factory at Prillias? for the Nawali factory because they have three bikes in the podium place here in Barcelona. We know that Vinales and Leicester Spargo have got the better pace. And so despite being promoted up a place by Brad Binder's problem for KTM, Mark Marquez didn't change position on that last lap. Let's have a look then at what happened. This is on board with Marco Betzecchi further back. He was up behind Quattro and Marquez and that is where. Number seven, you're trying to build up corner speed here through the slingshot on nine to maybe set up an overtake on the hard braking zone here. Second gear into turn 10. It's a Prullia versus a Prullia versus a Prullia. Brad Binder, Conca Betsecchi, throughout this Catalonia Grand Prix weekend, to be fair, off the back of signing a new VR46 contract for 2024. Hasn't really been able to celebrate that in some style, has he? Because it's been a, a tough old weekend. Eighth place, he lost that seventh. Vinales and Alexis Spargo and Oliveira all looking and sitting pretty comfortably in those mid-140s. Again, Jorge Martin just dips back into the 141s. Zarco is starting to close down, actually, on his teammate Hall. Yeah, thanks very much for that, uh, Simon. Yeah, it's been pretty windy all day here in Barto. The knock-on effect, then, of that mistake by Nervas Giannini in the first corner has been pretty significant, hasn't it? Brad Binder and Marco Bersek. Here of Miguel Oliveira, the two Aprilias, near enough, identical lap times last time around. Both did a 140.4. Miguel Oliveira could only manage a 140.8 last time around as he's got an eight tenth of a second cushion over the Premac. So Fernandez has had a look at Mark Marquez a couple of times in the first corner. And again, he hasn't quite been able to make it stick, has he, on the Repsol Honda man. This, at the moment, is a battle that's raging for the top ten. Yeah, they're just up ahead of them. They've got the former Moto3 title foe, Jack Miller. 
This is the battle for sixth place. They lean on each other, going through turns 11 and 12. Marquez, the younger Marquez, still will have the inside line as they go through 12, and he then slots them. To be passed by him, Martin up the inside, into turn one and into the podium positions. And given what happened to Oliveira in the sprint yesterday, the fact that he's already plummeting back to Oliveira, he was half a second slower than Vinales half a second slower than Martin as well, so you do just wonder, having pushed hard to maybe go with the factory of Aprilia's Oliveira, just as he did in that sprint yesterday, of Ralph Fernandez. He's the third rider that's experienced tech gremlins. It's a, a race of survival, isn't it? A, a real battle of attrition here in Barcelona. Good battle this, though, isn't it? Fabio Quattararo in the thick of it. As Further back, then, this is Betseki who's doing an absolutely incredible job yeah. on that soft tyre. He's still in the sort of mid to high 141s as Alex Marquez is just trying to break away from Quattro. This would be quite a salvage job for Fabio Quattararo for this, wouldn't it? Having qualified down in 18, promoted up to 17 on the grid. Looks like he might well salvage a top seven. Can he go with Alex Marquez, who clearly having got past Miller, was able to put some space. He says uh, he saw a foot come off the peg there from Fabio Gian Antonio. We still haven't seen that mistake from Alicia Spargo a couple of laps ago, but he has stabilised the situation. He was back into the 140s on the last lap around, the 140.996. He took a tenth back on Mar the two on screen here who can lap in the 140s. It's a, a Spargo who was a tenth and a half quicker than Vinales again last time around, but no one else is able to get below 141.996. Three. You can see the drop in pace as we now look at the ambulance of a full race distance. Now then, he's responding here, he's piling the pressure on Vinales. Alicia Spargaro, a 147-10 on lap 14, has got the gap down to eight and a half tenths. We're back here. Whatever happened, the lead had really come down to six tenths of a second. But as you can see, top left, it's going back up again. So I think Alicia Spargaro might well have just gone in a little bit too hot into turn 10 as he was closing in on his teammate. Yeah, these guys are now on a tightrope, aren't they, in terms of... Could be the second one coming through very, very quickly with Zarco, certainly quicker. Yeah, this is one of those circuits where the drop-in pace towards the end of the race is perhaps as stark as anywhere on the calendar. The fastest lap of the Grand Prix, which Maverick Pinales set on lap three, was a one... Lap 17. I wonder if Quattararo is also starting to hit some trouble. He was back in the 42s last time around. The trio behind him were all in the 41s as Jack Miller's now forced to defend from Fabio Di Gian Antonio, who's still got Augusto. It's right, it slips left, and then he manages to drag it to the apex somehow through turns 10 and 11. Clinging on here for a top 10 is the Aussie. While the gap is around half a second or more, Maric Vinales will feel relatively happy with that. Alicia Spargo, who maybe has just been happy to sit off Maverick Vinales, to not overheat and have front tyre temperature and pressure concerns, and now he's just safe. From his teammate up ahead of him, the gap is a quarter of a second. The Aprilia's are now down in the 142s. Just how much grip have they got left? Which of the RSGPs will be on top of the podium in five laps time? It's a straight shootout between the teammates. Twitch with his team. He will recognise how important a result out. this is, so he will make sure that this is clean. He won't send a daring move at the inside of Inyales. He won't come from an awful long way back. He'll make sure that it's clean and make sure that it's comfortable because Alicia Spargo will be well aware of the kind of just did not want to get the lead up, so tried to hang in there for as long as he could. The problem Vinales has got now is, of course, he wants to try and get back on terms with his teammate Alicia Spargo, but he did take the shortcut across turns two and three. So, of course, if he doesn't... Although, a valuable podium in terms of the championship for Jorge Martin. He's been struggling for Sunday podiums of late, so this will be a welcome boost. He can relax, he can cruise, because he's not going to have anything for Vinyard. Some nervy moments. I've got his family and friends, they can't watch the screens. Well, just a quick update on what's going on further back as we take a look at Alicia Spargaro's tyre. That's not really bad. Perfection personified this weekend. He led the way on Friday in both practice sessions, second on the grid. The only block in his copy but was missing out on pole position against Pekka Banyaya as Luca Marini was getting the best. We would have seen if Banyaya was able to take part in the restart of this race, but what you cannot deny is that the factory Aprilia has worked beautifully. Around. And a lonely third. Zarco is fourth. Three Aprilia's in the top five with Oliveira fifth. Alex Marquez takes sixth place, head of Quattararo, Miller, Augusto Fernandez and the Gian Antonio in tenth. There were some really good things.
Sedih bahagia selang-seling menghampiri Suka duka kecewa ku telah hadapi sendiri Tak ada orang lain terlalu sempurna Semua berawal dari rencana dan kerja nyata Percuma saja kau punya sejuta wacana Dia gak bergerak semua takkan terlaksana
mencari jejakmu menghilang kini tak bisa ku temukan lagi yang manis seperti tak ada lagi tak bisa ku ungkapkan dengan kata-kata tetap matamu membuatku terlena kini aku hanya bisa mengenangmu saja kau telah pergi dan takkan kembali ku bawa pergi cinta di hati ku takut semua akan terulang lagi ku hanya manusia biasa yang tak berdaya ku serahkan semua pada Tuhan yang kuasa cintamu semanis ambun pagi hari hanya sekejap membuatku tersisa takkan pernah ku ulangi cinta yang sama meski ku harus berkorban jiwa dan raga Aku 